let's actually move this one up. Oh yeah, see, did you hear that? That is so cool. Hi, I'm Rayburn Johnson for Sample Library Review, and today I'm checking out Pathfinder Cello by Osterhouse Sounds. Pathfinder Cello combines simple and organic live cello phrases with an innovative contact player interface that allows you to create highly customized cello phrases quickly and easily. This is far from a canned set of static cello phrases. This might just be the most brilliant phrase engine I've yet used. Pathfinder Cello is compatible with the free contact player. It includes 9,082 samples across 108 presets and downloads as 2.4 gigabytes. The drag and drop interface allows you to create both simple and elaborate cello phrases across eight key switches. Pathfinder Cello is available from both Loot Audio and Osterhouse Sounds for $89. I have long been a fan of Ben Osterhouse's libraries. He creates just the most unique and wonderful boutique string libraries, from Suspiro Strings to the English Bass. I mean, there's just so many great string libraries that Ben has come out with. But I've got to say, this, I don't know, this might be my favorite. This instrument is just so, so cool. The Pathfinder Cello. So Pathfinder Cello is essentially a set of pre-recorded phrases, sampled phrases that Ben has done, um, mostly just really simple kind of two note phrases that he's played in different ways. But the beauty of this instrument is not only in the 108 presets that Ben's given us in weaving those phrases together in elaborate ways, but also in the customization that you can do yourself within the contact player engine. So these phrases are completely editable and you can see this kind of workspace that you have here. Ben's done a wonderful job of graphically displaying what these phrases look like when they're played. You can actually put these phrases together in just the most elaborate ways. It's so, so cool. So we're going to go through a number of presets together, and then just for fun, maybe we'll build a sound as well, just to give you an idea of how the engine works. So let's go ahead and start out. The On the left, you'll see that there's actually eight key switches. That's the key switches here. On the left, those correspond to that. So essentially what this means is if I play a single note, I'm going to get this phrase. If I play two notes, I'm going to get this phrase, all the way up to eight notes in which I get this phrase. So the more notes I play, the different phrases I get. And you can combine those so that you can just really, really come up with something highly customized and, and interesting. Um, so you can see the presets here. As we look at this, you have a number of different presets. The quick start guide, you've got slow, fast, arpeggios, um, oscillating, experimental, just all sorts of different things. So let's just go through some of these together. I'm going to go ahead and start with the quick start. Let's just start with the regular sustains and see what we have. And I'm going to drop this down so that you can actually see kind of what's going on here. Simple sustain. Okay, so now I can either cycle through using the toggle switch or I can go back and, you know, do it like this. Now, the oscillating with sustains, let's listen to that. So, so cool. Okay, let's go to oscillating slow. And these were recorded close and dry. Um, by default, they do have built-in reverb. I'm gonna turn that down so you can get an idea of what these sound like dry.
So, so, so good. All right, let's turn the reverb back up. I, I like the reverb a lot. I tend to be a more, I, I like my cello a little drier. So I'm going to turn the reverb down a little bit. You can see that the phrases are tempo synced. These were originally corded at 120 BPM, but you do have the ability to double or half time the phrases so that, you know, with contacts, time machine capabilities, and the ability to double or half the phrase, you don't run into problems with being able to match your host tempo pretty much no matter what it is. All right, let's go ahead and move on to oscillating fast. Okay, let's play a little bit more. Let's play a fuller chord so you can hear. This is where you really get just this super cool cello ensemble feel. Check this out. So, so, so cool. All right, slow arc. And you'll notice when I push one note, it automatically jumps to the key switch for that one note. If I do two, etc., all the way up to eight. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. That is what is so cool. It's the samples are so good. They're just so good. And I don't know about you guys. I love all sorts of different string libraries. I mean, I love the big, rich, full, you know, ensembles, the huge um, string sections. I love that stuff with that more cinematic feel. But personally, I just have a soft spot for that more raw um, sound where it's, you know, just the smaller uh, quartets, the smaller, um, you know, I, I just personally like where you can really hear the, the bow hitting the strings and it's just a little bit rustic. I don't know. I love that. That's why I, I love this kind of library. Okay. Fast arc. Mm -hmm. All right, slow spin.
Love it. Love it. Love it. It's just like having a cellist <laughs> sitting in your studio with you. I love this. All right. Slow arpeggio. <laughs> Oh, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. This is the kind of instrument that is just fun to play. I mean, it's beautiful. It fits in your track so well, but golly, this is so fun to play. And we've done the sustain, so let's go, let's move forward here. Um, let's look at some of the slides. And let's go to slide down two. and clean up one. Ugh. Golly, I love this. Clean up two. And do you see how you can really see exactly what the notes are doing. These graphics are just, it's its the little things like this, guys. The, the fact that you can actually see where the note's going. I just love the visuals. It's so helpful, especially when you get into building your own phrases, which we'll do in just a few minutes. Beautiful. All right, let's go to clean down. Gorgeous. All right, let's jump down to triplet. Mm. 
triplet up one. And I keep, instead of staying on these presets, I really like going back and forth because I like to let you see what, what the graphic actually, um, the graphical representation of what we're playing here. Right, and let's jump to the next triplet. All right, let's go ahead and jump down to Fast Basics. And I think we've actually done some of these. Let's go to the oscillating phrases. How about up, down, one? Gorgeous. All right, let's go ahead and jump down to down up one. Golly, so cool. Let's go opposite motion in. I love being able to hold over, um, being able to sustain notes and carry those over and, you know, having those leading phrases as you're holding these keys down. It's just so, so cool being able to sustain, you know, having a sustained second or a sustained fourth. It's just really, really makes those chords super rich. All right. Staggered one.
Okay, staggered two. Okay, let's jump to fast oscillating. Let's do a few of these. Let's do opposite motion out. I love this. Okay, let's jump down to little phrases. Up, down, adjust, I guess? Or adjacent, I'm not sure. jump over to the triplet. Okay, let's go over to the melodies, back and forth.
and let's jump to arc one. Just like that, you've got an instant melody. <laughs> okay, let's try this arc three. Let's go to slow spin. There's lots more to go. Again, there's 108 different presets here, but I really want to be able to, you know, you do have some experimental effects. You have some miscellaneous things like arpeggios. I'll just do one or two of those really quickly, but then I want to show you actually how to build something. All right, let's go ahead and build something. Again, you have all of these different things that you can do. I mean, you can stack these in eight different layers. There's just so much going on here. But to create your own phrases, this is where, to me, the fun really happens. I mean, Ben has given you 108 presets, so there's tons you can do just with what's here. So even if you only bought this for the presets, it's definitely worth it. But in order to make your own stuff, you just simply hit this little button here, the edit button, and then you can see that what Ben has done is given you a number of different paths. Again, thus the name Pathfinder Cello. Now I'm gonna go ahead and let's go to user presets. And I'm just going to do a user preset just so that we can start, we can have something to start from scratch with. Okay. So essentially you can see you have your different paths here. You simply click on the grid and this is all, again, it's all tempo synced. So all you have to do is double click a phrase to insert it. So I'm going to insert this one or sorry, I guess you have to hit add. You can double click it as well once you get started. So my first phrase Super simple. Now you can set the loop length so you can either do the full bar. You can make your, I think it's one, two, three, four. So the, this is a 16 bars. You can make it shorter if you want to so that it loops quicker. Let's go ahead and actually shorten that for now to half. And then all I need to do is let's say I want to add another one. I'm going to add this one. Now, but I can drag this phrase and I can move it up to a different key. But what I have to keep in mind is I really need to set the trim and the fade because otherwise you can get some clicking, some popping, that kind of thing, obviously, because you're starting phrases and ending phrases together. So I'm going to actually move this over so that this phrase starts around the same time as this transition happens. So all I need to do is highlight this one. You can see I can click whichever one I want to look at. I'm going to highlight that one, and then I'm simply going to trim it. 
So you can see if I brought it all the way out, it would go there. I'm going to trim it to about the place where the next one starts and have it fade in gently. And then I want it to go the entire length and fade out just a little bit. Okay, so let's see what that sounds like. Oop, I did something wrong. Oh, I'm so good at doing this wrong. <laughs> let's see. What did I do? Let's, let's go back a little bit. Let's try that. Hmm. Sorry about that, guys. Let's go to the second one. Maybe I'm maybe I'm trying to do too much on one. All right, let's go ahead and now let's add this one. Oops. There we go. All right, so I'm going to adjust the trim on that one and have it fade in a little bit and then naturally fade out a little bit. So you can hear that second part coming in. So cool. And here's where it gets really fun too, is if I want to control the volume of that second phrase to really accentuate that, I can. And if I want to turn the other phrase down a little bit, I can do that. Now, let's say that I want to make this movement even higher. I can hit the plus button and watch this. Oh, it's I think I'm I'm exceeding the key range. Let me drop that down. There's where I'm messing up. Okay. Let me drop that down an octave. So cool. So, so, so cool. Let's actually, instead of fading that. I love that. That is so cool. So you can see, I mean, you can have so much fun with this. Let's just go ahead and add another one. Let's do something like this. Oh, I know. My bad, I replaced that. Hmm, I'm still learning this, guys. Let's see. Well, we'll actually start with that then. And then let's go ahead and add another one here. Ah, I'm doing something wrong. What am I doing? Oh, it's because I can only do two. Okay. <laughs> I think that's what it is, is you can do, I don't know. I was going to say you can do two because it's two keys. Let's go to three and see what happens. So I'm going to add this one. I'm going to drag it down. And then I'm going to add another one. Well, you know what? Let's drag and drop. Maybe that's the better way to do it. Let's do that. Okay. Let's try that. Yeah, this is more like it. There we go. Okay. So this might be a little haphazard and crazy, but we're going to fade this one out a little bit. So let's put that trim. Let's move that trim back and hit it about right there. And then let's move this one over like that. Let's trim it out just a hair. And then let's have that one fade a little bit more. Trim it out just a little bit. Maybe something like that. Nope, that's a little too much. Let's go back. Okay, let's see what this sounds like. Okay, let's turn that phrase up. I want to really hear that one and have that one accentuated. And then I'm going to turn the other two down. Let me turn him down a little bit. And then let's turn him down just a little bit. Let's actually move this one up. 
Oh, yeah. See, did you hear that? That is so cool. And then we're even going to double this. So right now it's doubled. Actually, let's do that. Let's take the double off of these. What that does is it actually does two samples of the same note. So we're going to really accentuate this one with a double and a single on the others. So you can see, I mean, that was super easy to create once I figured out what I was doing, right? <laughs> and it's just so easy. You can drag and drop. You can remove things when you don't like it. You know, you can fade in and out. You can even increase the speed. So let's say that I want this to go a little bit uh, faster. Just pop that in really fast. Listen to this. Actually, let's even move it over. Oh, I love that. Okay, what if we copied that and then we pasted it? I wonder what would happen then. Oh yeah, let's try that. Maybe even. I mean, is that cool or is that cool? And then we could even take that last one and take the double off and take the speed, slow it down a little bit, and we have this. Maybe even move it over. I mean, it's so easy. It's so fun. It's so cool. Um, forgive my fumbling with it. It takes a little while to kind of figure out what you're doing. But once you get the feel for it, it's just so easy. And you can see you have different tools for randomizing things like panning, randomizing direction. Um, you just got a lot of different options in this. But again, 108 presets tons to get you started. And then if you if you go, gosh, I really want to create something myself. I want to create something completely custom. You have eight slots to do it in and you can do it up to 16 bars. You can tempo sync this to your DAW. I mean, I love this library. I cannot gush enough about this. The, the cello, I can't have enough cello libraries. I have so many and I love them all. This one is just so unique though. It's so it just has a dark, beautiful tone to it. Um, you've got that gorgeous built-in reverb that you can use, but I love the fact that Ben recorded it really dry. So again, when you cut that reverb down, So, I mean, it's just such a, such a great library. I can't gush enough about it. I continue to be amazed that one person can create such cool contact interfaces. Ben just has such interesting concepts when it comes to his contact library. So I highly encourage you check out Pathfinder Cello and definitely go check out the rest of Ben Osterhouse's libraries. Um, you'll find some real uh, string-based gems in the Ben Osterhouse collection. Hope you've enjoyed the review today. Go check out Pathfinder Cello. Thanks for checking out Pathfinder Cello with me today. What do you think of this instrument? What do you think about the sound and the interface? Would you use Pathfinder Cello in your own work? Comment below and let us know your thoughts. Make sure to like the video and share it with your friends, and also be sure to subscribe to our channel. Also, check out samplelibraryreview.com for more news and reviews, and to stay in the know about weekly sales via our weekly deal compressor.